Some garden crops belong in containers and space is money when you're trying to grow high value foods for your nutrition and your budget. Containers can solve a lot of problems for us like reducing pests and weeds to name a couple. When we have more control in the garden, we're less stressed in the garden. I'm a solo gardener downsizing my 28 raised bed garden in just a few weeks and I'll show you the top three crops I've been growing in containers in my large garden and the three I can't wait to get into containers. I'll also show you which containers I've found to help these plants thrive and how. Before we dive way in, here are nine ways containers can help you grow what you want to grow in your garden. First, they allow you to grow food in small spaces and make the best of larger spaces. You can easily move them to optimize the sunlight exposure, protect plants from harsh weather, or rearrange your garden layout as needed. Since you can move your containers indoors or to sheltered areas to protect plants from frost, this actually allows you to more effortlessly extend your growing season. Growing plants in containers can help reduce the risk of soil-borne diseases and pests. You have more control over the soil, which can minimize these issues. You can choose the perfect soil mix for each type of plant, ensuring they get the right nutrients and conditions for optimal growth. For example, blueberries, they just require more acidic soil than many other garden crops. You can easily implement efficient watering systems like drip irrigation to minimize water usage and to add soil amendments to help conserve water. Growing in containers usually results in fewer weeds, saving you a lot of time and a lot of effort maintaining your garden. And they can be set at a height that reduces the need for bending and kneeling, making gardening a lot easier on our bodies. Finally, I think containers are perfect for trying out new crops and gardening techniques without a significant investment of time or space. I've found over the years that getting out and experimenting in the garden allows you to learn so much valuable information to increase productivity productivity and value. Now let's talk about these six amazing garden crops and then at the end of the video I'm going to show you which containers keep plant roots super healthy. Most herbs are extremely adaptable, easy to grow, and require little attention making them perfect for containers. Even though I've been growing in a large garden space I've always grown my herbs in containers to keep the garden beds free for other things. Especially herbs like mint that spread are perfect for containers because they're prevented from being invasive this way. Perennial herbs like chives are also perfect because they need to be divided every year or two to stay productive and then it's easy to do in containers. Herbs are plants I'm constantly harvesting from too, so I like the option of moving them where they're easy for me to access quickly instead of having to walk all the way out to the garden. I can move them closer to my back door. Even since I've been growing in a garden with 28 raised beds, I've faced the challenge of crop rotation. Tomatoes are a good example because they're so disease prone and I usually grow a lot of them because I like to make salsa and sauce. So sometimes it's challenging to not plant tomatoes or other plants of the same family in the same spot during consecutive growing seasons. Planting at least some of them in containers really help solve this problem because they give you more flexibility space-wise. Here I have a Montesino tomato plant in a container. This is an indeterminate variety which takes some pruning and staking to keep it under control in a container. And then this right here is a Midnight Roma tomato plant which is semi-determinate. Most semi-determinate tomato plants are actually just indeterminate plants with a bushier growth habit like determinate. Determinate plants are more compact and can be easier to grow in containers than indeterminate although both are going to be fine in containers. Indeterminate are just a little more high maintenance to keep them supported. I would still recommend staking and caging either variety. And if you do have a tomato plant that becomes diseased, it's easier to quarantine it from your other plants when it's in a container. It's also easier to replace the soil and get rid of soil-borne diseases and pests that overwinter in the soil. Growing peppers in containers has allowed me to experiment with different varieties over the years. I've had my main varieties that I grow for preserving in raised beds where I usually grow 12 plants in each 4 by 8 which are jalapeno, lively Italian orange, sweet bell, and pimento. So having containers on hand allows extra space to experiment with other varieties. I've found that some varieties are more compact than others like these mini bells that I have right here. So you can grow peppers in containers even if you have a small garden space and doing this also can help free up space in a larger garden to allow you to grow other things. These are the three crops I've regularly grown in containers and next are the three I can't wait to get into containers when I'm growing in my downsized garden. Potatoes take up a lot of space in the garden and a large amount of them can be grown in containers which frees up space for growing things like squash. I'm planning on planting some next spring in my 10 gallon grow bags. 
You can fit around three potato plants in a 10 gallon container and I've grown things in 25 gallon ones before and they get extremely heavy. The thing I'm most excited about is just dumping the potatoes out to harvest as opposed to digging them up out of my raised beds, which is a lot more work. Potatoes don't like compacted soil and you have a lot more control over your soil in smaller containers, making this a lot easier to accomplish for a good potato harvest. I can't wait to plant my potatoes in containers for the first time next spring, which is gonna be April where I live. I've had a lot of garden space taken up by June bearing strawberries over the past 10 years. Plus, I rotate my beds and plant fresh runners every year to make sure we have those big June bearing harvests every year. I made a video about this if you'd like to see how to propagate June bearing strawberries so you never have to buy the plants again if you don't want to. So I've been thinking about how I'm going to continue my strawberry growing in a much downsized garden space since we eat lots of strawberries and growing our own saves so much money. I'd love to try a vertical planter and I might try an ever bearing variety since they produce fewer runners. I've seen several gardening friends have success with growing lots of strawberries berries in vertical growing towers and I think I'm going to give it a shot next spring. And last but probably not least, I can't wait to plant as much of my lettuce as possible in containers to free up space for things like corn which by the way, you can also grow in containers depending on how much of it you wanna grow. I like to plant cut and come again lettuce that you plant densely and harvest mostly as baby greens and then the plants grow back to give you a few harvests before it becomes tough and bitter. This lends itself well to containers because you can tuck a lot of cut and come again lettuce into each one since it's densely planted. Succession planting also works well in containers where you sow seeds every couple of weeks so you have a continuous supply of fresh lettuce. You can easily just rotate your containers as you succeed and plant. Lettuce is a cool season crop so you can conveniently move your containers out of hot sun to extend time before the plants bolt from heat stress. I've been experimenting a lot with grow bags for the past five years or so and they're my container of choice. Here's what I've learned. Plants don't become root bound in grow bags because the grow bags are porous. When the roots reach the edges, they reach the air and stop growing in that direction, and they're air pruned. There's also just enough air circulation through the walls of the grow bags that the root system thrives. When roots reach the edges of plastic containers, they keep growing until they're all constrained and tangled and the plants become root bound. Grow bags are kind of like little raised beds, but they dry out more quickly, especially if they're not sitting on a surface like a lawn where they can wick up moisture from below. I like to use a drip irrigation system with a timer, and then I also add plenty of compost along with wool pellets to my grow bag mix to help the soil hold on to moisture. I really like these root pouch bags because they're nice and thick and they don't allow sunlight through the walls and they also have nice handles so that I can carry them around. These right here are 10 gallon grow bags and they're great for one tomato plant and one to two pepper plants each and like I said before about three potato plants will fit in a 10 gallon one. You'll really end up getting a feel for what you can fit in them pretty much as soon as you start growing in them. I've used 25 gallon bags before and although you can fit more in them, the downside is that it takes a lot of soil to fill them and then it's impossible to pick them up and move them around your garden. It's just as important to add mulch to grow bags as it is in raised beds or in-ground gardens. I like to add a good couple of inches of natural mulch on top, just like I do in my raised beds. Adding compost and wool pellets to the soil mix helps it hold nutrients, but I do feel like grow bags could have a tendency to leach out nutrients more quickly. If I notice my plants needing a boost, I'll water them with a tablespoon of fish emulsion per gallon of water every couple weeks or so. One of the things I want to do in my next garden is add more grow bags with planted flowers because they attract pollinators and scattering them around your garden area reduces your need to hand pollinate plants like squash if pollinators aren't plentiful enough. If you're ready to start planting your grow bags, you're going to want to watch this video next. And as always, thank you for joining me out here in the garden and I hope you'll join me as I move to a new location and rebuild my garden from scratch in the next few weeks. This will be my third time in the past 11 years building a garden from scratch here in South Carolina and I can't wait to show you how I'm going to apply everything I've learned. Of course, getting out here and growing our own food is a learning experience every single day we're out here doing it.